Steven, Todd, where, where are you? I, I can't where, it's really I can't dark see you. Here. Wait, are, did, are did we, we go audio only? Are we I can't find are we no. only Dan hit the light. Dan oh, forgot Dan wait. forgot to hit the oh. light. Dan. Blame, Good job. Blame Typical Dan. Typical Dan. He forgot to hit the lights. We're here. We're video. Just and kidding. For anybody who thought we were going audio only just because I inquired about questions of stuff, didn't mean we're actually going it's what inquiring means. Inquiring doesn't mean it's facts. Right? What is the question? It's a question. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is evolve the show because we've got photo news fix where we hammer home the photo news. Sometimes I do the photo news extra, which goes a little deeper into those photo news stories based on my opinion. And Raw Talk was somewhere in between uh, taking up a lot of time away from editing. And we're going to get into what we're working on editing in the real world reviews in just a minute. But the whole point, direction, feeling of Raw Talk at the moment is taking a deeper look at specific stories from a week yeah. where we go into, you know, we don't sit there and read the news because we do that on Photo News Fix, but we still acknowledge news stories, but have a different discussion about them as a group here at the table. Yep. So, we dive deep. Detailed discussion. Yeah. The idea is to make it simpler, uh, cut down on the length of the show so that Dan can get it edited within a certain period of time Short and to sweet. free up the space to create those other pieces of content like uh, the five minute, sorry, the real world reviews and spend time on the photo news fixes and stuff when that stuff yep. needs to yep. happen. Yep. <laughs> okay, I forgot to do my intro and we're 40 minutes into the show, so Dan's cutting this in right now. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo dot com. Welcome to episode two. 23 or 23 233 I don't know I, I think thought... it's 2 tw I think it's 223 Now back to the show <laughs> So something new that we're doing when it comes to the wheel of fro is figuring out who's going to spin the wheel of fro instead of taking it from flying solo questions which we may not do every week because the questions start to become repetitive is you have 24 hours from the time that Raw Talk is posted as a video on YouTube to leave a comment but not just to say hey pick me but leave a comment about your favorite part of the show or something that we talked about that you have an opinion on. Go a little deeper into the comment section and also reply to other people's comments so that you guys can interact there. And we're going to be looking for interactions and it has to be within the first 24 hours. So if you just listen to the audio, that's okay. You can listen to the audio over on the podcast email, podcasters and thing, but then go over to the YouTube and leave a comment. Yeah. If you'd like a chance to win whatever the wheel was spun. So, of course, you'll get to see what the prize is that you'd be playing for. So that's sweet. You should go and do yeah. that. Yeah. And we will pick somebody randomly in the comments. We will then probably send you a reply back to a comment telling you what to do because we don't use YouTube messages. Nah. I stopped using YouTube messages like four years ago. I didn't even know YouTube messages. I was had a no thing. idea. They hide it. Yeah. It's so no hard to find. Wow. Um, but they do hide it. Hmm. And there's that. What is that noise? YouTube messages. <laughs> You've got mail. Speaking of, I listened to a new podcast called... Dick Talk? No, it's called um, How It Was Done or something. Oh. How It's Made. No, not How It's Made, but it's with this guy, Guy. His name's Guy. <laughs> Some guy. <laughs> guy Rizza, sure guy, guy, guy Tizza, Guy, guy, guy Razza, something sure. like that. Yeah. But it's, a, it's another NPR show. And they they talk to really Hi, my name is successful, Guy. highly influential people like Mark Cuban or the founder of Whole Foods Not or Jared. Richard Branson. And it's Jared really Poland. only like a 20 minute. They run for 30 ish minutes. Yeah. But it's kind of between 25 and 28 minutes of actual interview time. Yeah. It's just the tip. It should. I wish it went deeper. Just sure. the tip. I wish they had a that's longer what shit, that's discussion. What they always say to you. <laughs> a really girthy discussion. Yeah. Well, I do. I wish they really had a longer discussion because it's it's really good. And what what's it? Let me double check. With was that the one you sent me about uh, uh, Facebook? Right? No, that one was. Geez, I'm just gonna pull this shit up because my brain isn't working. Who's calling me? Stupid infomercial calls, robocall bullshit. Hi, Jared. <laughs> no, it's like. <laughs> Your credit card has been approved. Call us back. Your bank account is yeah. fine. How I Built This Send is me a, $1,000. How I Built This is a really good podcast yeah. from NPR. And then Masters of this. Scale with Reed Hoffman. Oh, cool. He, he, they have a new one that they just posted today called Netflix. Uh, Reed Hastings in Culture Shock. And this, so, is, this is NPR as well? No. It's, that's another one. It's um, Masters of Scale with Reed Hoffman. Copy that. Copy that. 
So Reed Hoffman is the founder of LinkedIn, as well as one of the early founders in PayPal. That's where he made a shit ton of money. Gotcha. Uh, he does different podcasts, does different interviews. He did Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg, and they do it in a very serial kind of way mm. where they take the audio and I believe they consolidate and cut out unimportant yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what we do for Raw Talk, essentially. Well, no, they go further. Oh. Yeah, they they, they kind of chop in like... It's almost more like photo news fix where they chop in like excerpts from something else gotcha. to make the point of this story over here yeah. it's, it's it's more hmm. like that it's, it's it produced very well sounds interesting i i love like you know i've been thinking about books i think well people read books but people also do audio books i haven't had any luck with audio books it kind of bores me I, if i'm gonna read i rather read the book yeah but there is nothing better than sitting and listening to an audio podcast in the car for me yeah to learn something about business or to sure. learn something about successful people it's almost like reading their book because you're getting the stories yeah and, th and that's what I, I love about those podcasts so leave some comments with what podcasts that you listen to that are fun informative uh that you think i would like or steven or todd or dan would like and go from there so moving on to the next thing just making sure all my notes Yep, we hit that. Uh, my, I, I'm holding an, an Android phone. <gasps> I'm holding an Android phone right here. And then... Why? Well, why? Because I have the beta of, what's it called? My Gear Vault. <gasps> and it's right here. And I already sent Dan... Dan, I emailed you a video file. Because who knew, not me, that with Android, you could do a screen recording right from your phone. Yeah. I've been then doing that for quite some time now. Then it's impossible to figure out how to actually easily send it somewhere. <laughs> so I had to email it to myself as a 14 meg file for the 30 seconds because I'm like, Todd, look, I can transfer it to you via Bluetooth. 20 minutes. You know, it's just yeah. terrible. But the coolest thing, I actually like the design better on the Android. Than the Ooh. iOS version. Now, the, the beta may be out if you're watching this for select people for Android. Uh, that, I believe, is the 30th when we're doing that. And then we're targeting maybe 10 days after beta testing wow. to get it out. Yeah, well, Public because, release. Quick. Because we already had it made for, for iOS, so sure. it's basically over. What I like, there's this blue button, Stephen. Yeah, I love that. You hit this blue button, and it pops up new gear, new kit. That's only on Android. Whereas on the iPhone, you have to touch, touch the plus button in the, the top, top right, right corner. Yeah. This is so much I, better. I noticed more animation with the buttons as well, it seemed like. Yeah. On and I can Android swipe version. left or right to go from kits to co uh, categories. Yeah, that's nice. So that stuff is pretty cool. The only thing I didn't find in here was where's feedback? Do I'm I have sure to go it's into there somewhere. We account? don't want your damn feedback. Well, I have to go into account, then send, send feedback. feedback. Uh, and the account button moved for anybody. It's going to be new for people on Android, so they won't know it had moved because we actually cleared up space in the bottom of the uh, the dock. You see those three things down at the dock? Yep. There used three to be tabs. four. But we started to clear up space early before we did Android so that we can nice. open up space for future endeavors of things that we put there. And you're still pushing the photo news fix in that subscription? Yeah, under videos. Under videos, which is great. And the videos seem uh, to play instantly, too, uh, compared yeah, to Yeah, I'm iOS. pushing I'm that under sure videos. Why. But the problem is it's not there. Oh, I'm gonna have to tell him bug fix. I, let me go to let me go to feedback. Where the fuck earmuffs <laughs> are my? Where's my ca extra category? It's missing. It's missing a category. Oh, that's why it's a beta. Exactly. Yeah, it's missing a category, but I found it. But it looks really sweet on the Androids, and I have two Androids running it. So nice. You seem to be uh, really liking Android the past couple of weeks. I think. Well, I don't. I. But that AirDrop is so much nicer on the uh, Apple. I do love you know, the AirDrop. I love the Thunderbolt. That's super easy. Um, with Max no, but in I general. love how well. I'm also using two newer phones than the iPhone 7. There's the LG G6, which is the offering from LG, which has a new OLED display, which looks so much nicer than the Apple. I've got that Huawei yeah, the screen Mate, is Mate 9 incredible. or Mat 9, and the colors and vibrancy looks better. Yeah. The only thing is that when the iPhone 8 comes out, it's going to catch up to these sure. things and have all that different stuff I, on I it. I feel like the functionality of the Android phone, it just it just has a lot more functionality. There where are. Apple there tends are. to limit you and what you can do. And I'm, I'm an iOS user as well. I, I, I like, I mean, I like how, how my Gear Vault looks on Android. Yeah, but I, do too. I can't wait to go into the future of what the ideas are to make this app sticky and to make it even better than yeah, just man. organizing and protecting your gear. Awesome. That's going to get better. Yep. Um, an update on Amazon Drive. This morning, I updated my Amazon Drive to pay for it. Remember? Yeah. No I longer is it going to be free. It's not unlimited. Remember, anymore. it was fifty nine ninety nine a year. You had the unlimited one. Yeah, gotcha. I yeah. had unlimited. Yeah. So it says no longer unlimited. I had until August twenty fifth to to pay, and I started uploading the the real world review stuff. You know, it sucks when you shoot ninety gigs of photos with the uh, the Sony A nine. I had to upload that stuff. You're strictly backing up your photos on there. 
Yeah, but you know what? You know, it's no, my photos and I put video, all my files, all your stuff. But what most people didn't realize, and they were yelling at, you know, upset that for the last two years it's been unlimited and they're like you suck amazon it's like well actually no if you if you had a clue you'd realize that they don't count photos towards that towards the pay the paying so i had to pay for seven terabytes it's 419 dollars for the year when you amortize that out for 12 months to store seven terabytes of important shit just to have up into the cloud yeah. not a big deal yeah, yeah I, I just got my email like last week that I have to update but by a certain just time. know that the raw files I upload don't count towards don't that, count toward that terabyte. terabyte. That's great. So that's good to know. I yeah. just keep uploading them. I didn't yep. know that. So that's good. Good. Uh, all right. Now we're moving on to the next section where we talk about things that we've done and are coming up next. We've got we did a lot. In what the past real world weeks. reviews we've filmed. We filmed four real world reviews in the matter of like a 10 day span. Yeah. Because the idea is to get out real world reviews as often as possible, maybe every 10 days, maybe every maybe every week if we could, but that's the goal. You know, that's yeah. that yeah. is that is the goal. So the first one we did which has been in the can for a while. Oh yeah, we did 3 in the matter of three 10 days. 3 we didn't. Yeah. It's that other one that's been sitting we because did about we've been two months ago, one. maybe a month and a half ago. The best well, one. the Sigma 135 F1.8. We wish we could turn them around as much faster. Now we're getting there. Yeah. Now yeah. we're starting to get to that point. Because uh, I saw some comments like, you said when you moved to the factory, you'd be getting this stuff out a bit quicker, and you've been in the factory for months. And, well, no, that's not really the case because you're not here to really know what the hell goes on here because uh, we weren't actually moved in fully. I was going to say, we didn't move and in still, until There's still parts ago. under construction. In well, now we've got totally the two computers here. Dan's been editing here yeah. all the time, and Steven's starting to edit here. So that's a, that's a big deal. And that's only been in, like, the last month. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's really only been a month where we've been officially yeah. moved yeah. in. And we're also evolving the, the way that we are releasing content. Yep. Yeah. We're trying yes. to focus on the content that does really well. Bigger, heavy-hitting videos. Right, which means just clickbait, clickbait, and clickbait. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because I love clickbait. That's that what we're going to put on the board back here. Just clickbait, clickbait, <laughs> Right, clickbait. if it's not clickbait, we <laughs> yeah. don't want it. If it's not clickbait, it's fake. Right, right. We're going to have a board full of clickbait titles, and then all the video content's yeah. not yeah. going to... Yeah. Perfect. Make any sense Perfect. compared nope, to that title. I love it. So the other three that we did, we did the Nikon 8 to 15 fisheye. Yeah. We shot that at a skate park as well as the interesting art museum. Lens. Yeah, it's an interesting Odd lens. Odd lens choice for sure, but it works in some situations. Yeah, and you'll see in the real world review the differences between 8 millimeters, 15 millimeters, and then correcting the 8 millimeters in post. That's the biggest feature, in my opinion, is the lens correction in Lightroom or Photoshop. Yeah. Huge. You can make an 8 circu circular fish fisheye image perfect yeah. almost rectilinear at that well, point. well you can make it straight but the edges the are going to be the center the edges yeah. are going to look like shit exactly and you can which kind of looks cool to though. a certain degree as well you can do that in video yeah. kind of correct that really yeah. that might take a while 24 times correcting every single image yeah, yeah i mean it's, it's a lot of processing a, power i'm sure depends on it if if what look you're looking for it's a very special that's a very special type of lens yeah, yeah exactly yeah. kind of like todd um then we did the sigma 100 to 400 at the zoo that was fun. We were looking to see where to go to photograph using the 100 to 400 Sigma. And at first, I thought we were going to get boned the entire day. Yeah, because the gorilla came running at you really fast. Because <laughs> it was packed. <laughs> and it wasn't that packed, Stephen. Ah! Stephen, we, we, you know that it wasn't that packed. Because when we came back at, at 3 o'clock, well, the, like the, the, the garage was empty. But I think from 9 a.m. to 12, it was fairly packed for a summer day. All the kids are out. By the intro. By the entrance. Exactly. But when we got to the back... It wasn't that bad. Yeah, but that gorilla part in the beginning, that, there was a lot of people in there. It was tough for you to really get a shot without reflection. Indoors. Indoors. And that woman with that freaking hat on. Yeah, so with the one, the Sigma 100 to 400, it's an $800 lens. Yeah. I'm not going to go into full details because that's what the real world sure. review is. But I took it out to a soccer field before, and I was not going to like the lens. I wasn't liking you the impressed. results. Yeah. Well, it was and it was partly human error the, and my fault because I put it into aperture priority to replicate how somebody else who an amateur who may buy this lens would shoot and what was ending up happening is that the shutter speed was at and I was on a D500 was at like 1 500th 1 640th of a second roughly out at 400 millimeters which the equivalent to that is uh, on a 35 millimeter is a 600 millimeter lens. Yeah. And at that point, you may introduce some shaking. So you were seeing a lot of camera shaking. Well, your I was just seeing not sharp images. Yeah. But I looked back at the images that I did first in, in manual at mm -hmm. one twelve fiftieth of a second, and they were fine. And so when we got out to the zoo, all I can tell you is that when you see the picture of the eagle 
which is shot through netting. So detailed. I looked at you look at the 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 feathers and you look at the beak. Now, I haven't posted those yet, so you won't see them. But just know, I'm painting pictures in your mind. How sharp. Ooh. The feathers were right under its thing. But it makes you wonder, you know, is it worth paying 10 grand for a giant lens or get an $800 lens in nice light? And that's what we try to figure out in the... Um, in the review. In the review. We yeah. talk about that. I was, in all honesty, blown away by what I came out with. The, the biggest difference is going to be, are you indoors or are you outdoors? Yeah, that, that's always lenses. the key. Yep. And I'll tell you, we did it both on full frame, yep. Nikon D5, and a D500. Sigma only had the Nikon version or else we would have gotten a Canon version to try out. It seems that people get the Nikon versions out before they get the Canon versions out. So then the last thing that we did, uh, which can lead, well, we won't go into the discussion yet, but the Sony A9. Yes. Um, Been playing with that for the past week. We have. All right, that's gear of the week too, so I'll, I'll pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is. It, it's gear of the week. So where did I get the body? Because we couldn't get them from Sony. Sony, for whatever reason, at the time of trying to get this, didn't have any models. and Only for us. Wasn't very That's receptive. Weird. Wasn't very receptive to uh, Frono's Photo's take on the world of Sony. But we'll save that for another. Do you know the top of this kind of looks like a Leica? The way hmm. that it's shaped? Yeah, a lot of those ca uh, mirrorless cameras, I feel like, look so like that. So the body came from Alan's camera. The 24 to 70 came from Alan's camera. Luckily, Brandon turned a new body into a rental body. So if you're going to look to rent one of these from a local store, you can go to Alan's camera and ask for it. Yep. They usually have one thing in stock uh, for each item. But we got the grip and the 70 to 200. We got that from Lens Rentals. Yep. So Lens Rentals has a ton of stuff in stock for if you're not near Alan's camera to go pick something up to rent it, which most people aren't. Lens Rentals, uh, we rented it from there. And the so only thing we didn't places. have for this particular review was a long piece of glass and ultra wide. Well, yeah, the, which the, the ultra wide is not out yet. The 12 to 24 is not out. And the 100 to 400 isn't out. Yep. And we did a real world review out shooting soccer at the Philadelphia Union. You may have seen the video where I talked about the banding issue that I found in my... Let's, let's break this down for people. Break it down. Let's break down what clickbait is. So in every Sony A9? Right. So when Steve, we discuss titles because we look for titles that have possibilities of getting clicked more often. Thus, that's called a good headline or highly clickable because it makes people interested. You can call it clickbait all the fuck you want to call it clickbait because that's the point, to get people to click it as long as you deliver. So at first I was going to put up the title Sony A like the Sony A9 has banding issues. We went back and forth on this via email yeah, and phone yeah. calls. Well, we did. We we ended up coming up with the Sony A9 has banding issues. No, my Sony. No. Uh, we originally came yeah. up with the Sony A9 has banding issues, and I agreed on that. I thought that would have been the best way to get the most clicks. Then right, right before I put the video up, I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, why don't I do it like this and say my Sony A9? Because that way, I'm not saying everybody's Sony A9. I'm making it clear that it's mine, and it has a banding issue, which then, right off the rip in the, in the video, I acknowledge the fact that it's mine, and here's the issue. Yeah. Show you the picture. You can't deny the fact that that's something. And that, doesn't, and that wasn't an indictment of the camera completely, because if anybody who watched that video, if they missed the part where I said Nikon and Canon better be sh scared, they're probably shaking in their boots because Sony is coming after them because there's so many cool features in this camera. It's an awesome camera. And I'm very happy with the results and you're going to have to wait for the real world review yep. to, uh, to go into all, to, to, to get the final results. But yes, I was talking about the, the clickbait. It's not clickbait if it delivers. I mean, we were talking about this camera yesterday and how the majority of that review a major majority of it's going to be very positive. What I love about that camera too, Todd and I were talking about this, is the downscaling of 6K image to a 4K it's video impressive. readout. And it's, it's using the it full frame crispy. sensor, so there's no loss well, in yep. a crop Let's think about factor it. or anything like that when you're shooting 4K. Nikon D5 crops at 1.7 uh, times when you shoot 4K. 1.5. It's 1.5? It's not 1.7? The 1. D5 is 1.5. Oh, okay, so that's 1.5. So that's cropping. You're not getting full frame. The 5D Mark IV is... 1.74. Oh, that one's 1.74. Yep. That's where I got confused. And then the 1DX Mark II is 1.4, which is about Super 35 anyway. Um, but this camera 
doesn't have S log, which is kind of surprising. So yeah. from a professional standpoint, I mean, you can still mess around with the picture profiles and they try do look and, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I shot as flat as possible for the most dynamic range, right? And it just looks sharp, even with zero sharpening on, yep. really nothing nice. applied. It looks great. Really nice. From a video standpoint. So this so. is part of those deeper discussions. We've got the photo news-ish type stuff that we'll get into in a second. But also we like talk we want to talk about the things we do and results and hopefully you guys enjoy yeah. it in the car yeah. and learn something from it. But I will say I was editing up all of the photos from the A9 yesterday so that you can get this done as quickly get going as possible. On the review, yeah. Um I, I did a photo of Dave Leno up in the in his broadcast booth. So it's really super bright outside. It's not as bright in the booth. It's a complete shade, yeah. And I was shooting 800 ISO with the 24 to 70 using the A9, and I was able to balance the light outside with inside in the processing part where it looks like the same exposure almost. I didn't realize it was that bright outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. showed Steven. I showed. I had no I idea. I mean, Todd, you remember when there was a silhouetted screen when I was editing? Yeah. And you were like, oh, great exposure. And I was saying that, that I couldn't balance out the background. Wow. It was basically in complete shadow. That's impressive. Shade. And the outside was really bright. It was yeah, I was able to bring it down. Sunny day. Bring it down and bring that file together. And I put that on Insta Stories. So if you're not following my Instagram, it's Jared Poland on Instagram. You can follow the Insta Stories when, when I put them up. And I showed these images for anybody that was watching it, could see the before and the after of that particular picture of Dave. And what blew my mind is that you shot that picture at 800 ISO, where normally when you want to recover the shadows or the highlights from that extreme of a difference in dynamic range, yeah. you want to shoot at like 100 ISO for clean, you know, when you're bringing up those shadows, there's no noise being introduced or anything like that. And it still looks great, the amount of detail you recovered from that. So Yeah, and the big question to the answer in, in the final is, how does the ISO look? Which is always confusing because... You can't compare a shot where I fill the frame with somebody's face at the same at a higher ISO and it looks great because of all the detail versus uh, an image where you're shooting with a 70 to 200 because all I had a was a 70 to 200 to shoot yeah. soccer. I have to wait till they get closer. So as you if you sort of kind of fill the frame, then you zoom in, it's going to look like it introduces more grain. But in all reality, it's probably on par with the other cameras that are out there. Yeah, I agree. So uh, next in that's terms good, of photo that's, news, that's a good little preview. Yeah. Yeah, that's a preview. So look forward to that. So in terms of photo news stuff, let's go into the Canon 6D Mark II spectacles because they just announced the 6D Mark II after 23 years of people waiting. Giant spectacles. Years. Giant spectacles. So in terms of specs, we have 26 megapixel full frame sensor, Digic 7 processor, which is the first seven. full frame to get it. Seven? The 5D Mark IV didn't even get it, but I believe the M5 or one of those M series cameras did get it. Uh, now 45 all cross type focus points, which is exactly what the 80D has. Uh, so essentially What's it's 5D almost- have 63? This 5D has, I think, 63, but only 43 it of- 61. It's 61, only 43 of them are cross type. Mm. So this has more cross type uh, focus points. And again, they're all cross type, no, which is awesome. What about, can I get um, Star of David type? Uh, it has dual pixel CMOS AF, which is incredible. We all love that for yeah. video autofocus or just autofocus in general. 6.5 frames per second shooting, which is decent. I think it's up from like four or five in the original 60. I know it wasn't that fast, the original one. Now, they did bump up the ISO quite a bit. It's up to now 40,000 for a native ISO, expandable up to 102,400 in H2. This is what I don't understand. Full HD at only 60 frames per second in video. This could have been the end-all, be-all vlogging camera, full frame, tiltable, very angle screen, and it's not 4K. How much heavier is it than an 80D? I'm not really sure. I don't have the those specs probably, in front of uh, me. They, des they definitely stress the water weatherproofing, dust resistant. It's probably a little heftier. It doesn't have the 4K video out or any of those features, but it does have f a true 4K time lapse, they say. Oh, uh, yay. Which is UHD. But that means nothing because video isn't 4K. And this is the first full frame, I believe, to get the five axis electronic image stabilization, the embody stuff that they have. Oh, right. It's digital. It works great, but well, it does it crop the down the sensor. Yeah. Yes. It does crop down the sensor a decent amount, though. You would you have seen it in video. the vlog that I did in New York City. Yeah. Now, I don't think I put the five-way axis on yours. I think I just put the normal standard oh. optical. Oh, I thought you did. I, I thought you I just I thought thought you No, because it, it did crop in that much oh, more. too much, right. Yeah, because there's the optical one, then there's like the electronic stabilizer, too, which is that five-way, and that really crops in a good amount on the sensor. Uh, and then there's the typical anti-flicker, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, yeah. GPS. Yeah, it yeah, does yeah. have GPS, which I was kind of shocked about. Nobody cares about GPS. And, uh, well, landscape Here comes the comments. Well, the, 
And you only have one card slot, which is the same as the original 60, and it's UHS-1. Woof. I don't know why Canon is so behind on UHS-2. I mean, UHS-3 is out now. And how much? Uh, and then it's $2,000 for the body only, which is a decent price. So it's the first full frame with a swivel screen, though. With, it, uh, with a very screen. angle touch yeah. screen, correct. Which is good. It just, I mean, so you got two thousand dollars to spend. Right? And the original sixty, by the way, I think was twenty two hundred dollars when it got announced. So it is a little, a little cheaper, cheaper than the original one. I want to look up what a a D seven hundred is. And Sorry, I think the D750. original sixty today sells for like twelve hundred bucks. Like it's really inexpensive if you want a full frame entry level camera. Yeah. So here, Nikon's full frame, you're looking at. Well, I don't, I don't count Ritz camera as a reputable source for pricing. How about that? <laughs> Good no. old Ritz, your favorite. Like B and H reputable pricing. Yeah. So I agree. If Ritz has it for fifteen twenty nine ninety five, right? How are they doing that when B and H is selling it for seventeen ninety six ninety five, which is MVP pricing? Uh, Adorama selling it for seventeen ninety six ninety five. Allen's camera is going to sell it for the same price that B and H and Adorama this have is it. The sixty? No, I'm looking at the D seven fifty because I want to okay. see what Nikon's full frame offering. Gotcha. Nikon has had a full frame. They'd have had a six hundred, a six ten, a seven fifty. Uh, all along, and it's fifteen uh, seventeen hundred dollars. So it's not that far off. The D D seven fifty is old now. Now, yes, it's a three year old camera, but it doesn't have four K. And the two thousand dollar six D Mark II doesn't have four K, but it does have dual pixel AF, which is fantastic. Yeah, we all know that. But that's the thing. It's like every Sony camera that comes out has four K, no matter what it is. As it should. It's two thousand seventeen. Yes. I don't understand what took so long for the six D Mark II to come out. For one, why do you have UHS-1 cards in there? That's kind of lame. And on the Canon, it, it's hard to make a decision on, on what to buy. You got 80D, 77D, T7i, not full frame. But in the full frame, you've only had one, op one option. Yeah. Well, not counting the 1DX because... Yeah, you know, it's a reasonable $6, price. Camera, so two thousand yeah. dollars to get into the game. You have to decide: yeah. Are you going to spend the what is the 80D? What did we say? Fourteen hundred about. 14, yeah, it was thirteen ninety nine. So. It's a big difference, but a full-frame camera with better ISO and the Digic 7 is going to be a better option for still photos if you're in the Canon world. I agree. Still photos, I think this will blow away the ADD because, again, it has the same focusing system, but the yeah. ISO alone, and they usually have a custom-built sensor always for the 60 series. At least that's how it was with the original 60, and that was even, they say, better than the 5D Mark III. Yeah. What were the, did you have video specs on it? Again, just 1080p, 60 frames per second. Up to, so you do 24, you Up, still yeah, do that. Yeah, standard 24, yes. 30, all, all that. that. You, you still, if you had your choice between a, Todd, you had your choice between shooting video with an ADD crop sensor or a 6D Mark II with a full frame sensor, what, what are you going with? A couple of years ago, a full frame that I could have all those options with the articulating screen and dual pixel AF, I probably would have jumped all over that. Now, it, it just being future-proof at this point, like right today, I, I'd really hesitate not having 4K just as an option moving well, forward. If you had to pick those two cameras, though. If I had to pick well, those, if frame. I had to pick choice between an ADD and, and, and this one, and I, was on a, and I was on a budget, I'd probably get the ADD. Now, price-wise, would uh -oh. you rather get the 6D Mark II or the 5D Mark IV? Because that's a... Uh, Fifteen hundred dollar difference, almost. Yeah, that, they're man, not making that easy. They they do not make it easy. You know, all. and I, I see. I do understand why they took out the four K because if they did put four K with a great codec in this camera, five D sales. If you're using it for video, the they're door. going out the door. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's, so I, man, that's tough. It's just such a tough spot. I, I don't know why they limit it so much. Yeah. Well. So for anybody out there trying to figure it out, if it comes down to stills all day, I'm recommending full frame Agreed. over the Definitely. other one. It is a little more expensive, but to step into the full game, the full market, full frame world, the ADD is long in the tooth. It's old. Of course, they'll replace it with a 90D or something anyway with other features. But if you can jump into that full frame, you do have the ability to shoot video. The video you get from it is still going to be fine. It's not going to be bad by any stretch of the imagination because it's the glass you put on it. It's what you do with the video. It's all about your story. And, and that's the big deal. I just think Sony is eating their Nikon and Canon's oh, launches yeah, sure. when it comes to video because they just put a shit ton of specs. And so it doesn't have S-Log, but it has all these other features and it also overheats. And I do want to be clear Sometimes. for the still side that this does not have a joystick. You still have to use the back circular dial to select your focus points. Okay, forget that. So, Screw this camera. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> that's how the original 60 was. They don't this, have a joystick? This body is exactly the same. That is the worst well, design. Again, it's basically a full-frame ADD, and the ADD doesn't so have stupid. one. But that's so stupid. It is a full-frame ADD. How it do is. you not put 
a joystick to move 45 focusing points. This, this is what made me, I remember when I was getting my 5D Mark III when I was upgrading to that, I, I was debating on the 6D versus the 5D Mark III because they both came out similar times and I went for the 5D mainly just for the focus points and the joystick. Does yeah. my 7D have a joystick? Your se- Yeah, 7Ds have joysticks. Yeah. So why doesn't the... How, Canon, get your head out of your asses. How do you not have a joystick or at least the touchscreen thing it's, like the M5 that lets you move the focusing I mean, points. the 6D has always been a dumbed-down full-frame camera. The bare bones, you know, oh. that's what it is. <sighs> yeah. That's such a bitch. So that's the biggest thing for me on this Wait, camera you're telling that me does with, not have well, a joystick. With the ADD, doesn't it have a D-pad? Yeah, there's still a D-pad, like a circular pad on the bottom that you select your focus points. Oh, but you can still move it? Yeah, you can oh, still use it, of so course. So I take all that shit back I just said <laughs> because you can still move it. I don't need a joystick. I, I thought I personally that meant think, that it didn't have it at all. Oh, no. But then how would you change focus the points? Old way, the old way the Canons changed focus points before they put in a D-pad was you literally had to press a button in the top right corner on the back. You had to turn this oh. dial up here or turn... So you turn mm. this dial this way to go this way or this way. Or you turn the back dial to literally rotate through them. Yeah, they're like still, playing Battleship. There's right. still the D-pad and everything in there. Just right, no I actual. Take it back. You can change your focusing points then. <laughs> yes. It's perfectly fine. Yes. I just thought, I'm like. I personally think it's a lot harder to use the D-pad versus the joystick because the joystick's always in a perfect area for your well, thumb. The, but the Nikon quick. forever had the D-pad on the D3, on the D2H, all Maybe that. Maybe it's just because I'm so used to it by now. Yeah, it's yeah. super easy to yeah. do with a D-pad. But for video, it is a full-frame ADD. Yeah. Which will get better video quality, though. Yep, yep. And yeah. I'm sure you can touch the, uh, well, dual pixel AF, but also you can use their app to sit there and control exactly. everything. Yeah. Can't beat yeah. that. Let's move on to the next photo news story, which caught us all off guard. <sighs> yeah. We had no idea that this was even a thing. When I'm reading uh, Do It Yourself... DIY photography, yep. Right, because I saw it there first, and I was like... They tend to always get the stories first, I think. That's because they're up seven hours, they are. six hours in Israel. Yes. It's earlier. But they they had that camera... Uh, sorry, had the news about Micron, and so I went and read the blog. Micron is the owner of Lexar, and the, bl- the, the blog post was totally... Very vague. It, it was vague, and if you read into it, you could kind of understand what it meant. Yeah. And basically what is happening is that Micron has decided to shut down the Lexar brand, meaning no more Lexar cards. The retail brand. Right. And and so that caught us off guard. And it makes you think, was it yeah. not doing well? But on the other side, from what I've gathered and what we've gathered, is that Micron is doing so well selling other memory that this must not be worth the effort or the manpower, unfortunately, meaning everybody gets fired, to continue to run it. Must be just a fraction of their total yeah. income at this yeah. point. If they're going to really get rid of the entire brand, hopefully someone buys it out because I don't want it to die completely. Well, if somebody buys it out, I would be okay with them buying it out if it was still using the same manufacturing exactly. and yeah. everything. Now, same if they're quality. just buying a name and then they're going to go shittily put something together in China... I don't want it to be Kodak China. version 2. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my biggest fear. Yeah. I do or not Polaroid, want that to happen. Exactly. Or any of those companies that just buy a name. Now, it's kind of interesting because you look at it in the market and you've got SanDisk and you've got Lexar are the top two that you always hear about. Canon and Nikon, well, well, actually Sony almost now, but... So you got those, you have those two. Now, I've been using Lexar, Steven's used Lexar a long time. The reason, yeah, one of the reasons I had to start using one. Lexar was the Nikon D4 introduced the XQD card, the Nikon D5 introduced two XQD cards, and SanDisk made the decision years ago to say, no, we are not going to make XQD cards. They chose not to. They focused on CFast. Yep. Sony makes Lexar cards. Uh, sorry. Sony makes uh, XQD. So the only way that you're going to get XQD cards after this currently is to buy them from Sony. I mean, it's essentially a monopoly on the XQD card yeah, front. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to affect the price at all at that point. I, I don't think it's going to affect it. The prices came down. I, I don't think it's going to affect those. I mean, there's no yeah. competition XQD, now, though. That's fine. Sony would be stupid because if Sony... Ra- well, Sony is stupid sometimes beta tapes, all of that stuff. Yep. If they raise the prices and nobody buys XQD, then people are not going to buy cameras with XQD. Only people making cameras with XQD, Nikon. Sony doesn't even make damn cameras with XQD in it. I think they have one that uses an XQD. I think their cinema cameras do XQD. Let me get back to Sony again real quick. They built an A9 and they put in there a UHS-1 card and a UHS-2 SD card slot and call it a professional camera. If you want to call something a professional camera, put an XQD card slot in it. Or a CFast or, or something that you can't just snap in your hands and break right, in half. Right. Anybody, you could try... SD cards are not professional cards. 
You may get professional speeds. You may get certain things that they call them professional cards. They're definitely cards, fast, but... But they're not... Pro- they're not durable. If that piece of plastic falls off for the lock, you're screwed. Yep. Oh, yeah. If it just gets bent a little bit, you're screwed. And yes, you can wash them and dry them and the they still pins, work. Yeah. But they're the XQD exposed. card is so fast. It's durable. It's like a, a mini SSD drive. I... Anyway, it, it's so we contacted Lexar, our people at Lexar, and we didn't even know about this beforehand. We, we didn't found know out about it. when everyone else found out. I asked them to send a lot of samples. <laughs> like, send well, us everything you got. If you're shutting Back down all your inventory, truck. back it up. <laughs> Where's your sound effect for that, Todd? <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <sighs> yeah, the, back the truck, back that truck up to Ooh. to bring us some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of disappointing news. It sucks for the people that work there. It really does. It, well, it's a shame. Yeah. It's a shame for people losing jobs. But my biggest thing is the uh, the card reader. I love, love that smart hub. Yeah. And yeah. now there won't be Give a version 2, can. version 3. Yeah. It's never going to be upgraded. Well, where where are we going to get card readers? Does SanDisk make? I don't think San. I think Sony, they had some kind of patent on it. So I don't think SanDisk couldn't even make Sony a similar product. Sony makes SQD, XQD card reader because they have mm. to because it's a Sony card. I just love the fact that it's a hub. Oh, I love the hub. Believe modular. me, the hub is freaking awesome yeah we all have a hub dan's got it you've got it i've got it todd's got it yeah. we bought none of them actually you got one as a gift I for christmas did buy, yeah yeah and then they gave them, oh, gave oh, us a bunch oh, of you're welcome i didn't buy Steven. it santa bought it they maybe gave i'll us, buy some lexar but i bought the us that was the usb3 one this is like four or five years ago when they first came out with it it's not I that long it. ago four three four years ago then. yeah probably two three years ago yeah it was a long time ago yeah and they were cool yeah they are cool and the uh the the new one with thunderbolt I just leave that plugged into my computer all the time. Why not? Yep. Though I've noticed sometimes I get these issues with super, super long transfer times showing up, and then I've got to like reset the computer. I don't know if it's the computer. Well, I noticed something was weird with yours because it always shows like that. There's a card inserted, but the, there's not. In some of them, but but slot one doesn't seem to work as well as slot two yeah. and three. Oh. Hey, Lexar, please send me five, <laughs> sorry, 15 <laughs> sorry, 27 hubs. hubs. Send me 15 hubs. I'll, I'll give some away. One some on million. the black market. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. There are possible companies that could buy them. I'll throw out maybe would would Sam I don't know if Samsung would buy it. I don't know if not. Nah, why would Samsung even get into that? Well, I don't the question know who is, would well, do it. Some of the third party. Well, let me go out on makers. a limb right now. Amazon's and, and, gonna buy it and put it in Whole Foods. Let me just say that Delkin cards. I haven't. I, I I'm not a fan of Delkin There's cards. Delkin. I'm Kingston, not a fan of Kingston. Transcend. Cards. I'm definitely not a fan of Transcend cards. All my I cards actually, are Transcend. And PNY or PK PN, PNY uh, CKY. I actually used Transcend cards when I first got into photography. I don't know, 10 years Did ago. Did you know Hoodman makes cards? And I, well, Hoodman does. And I've Do they had still them make cards? fail. They Ooh. sent me a card. They and were so expensive. They were expensive because they were metal. Yeah. They, they, I've never had cards, uh, compact flash cards corrupt. I shot video and this was with my D3 at the time, D3S, corruption. Oh, like no. I couldn't get, I had to. I thought they were out of the card market. I didn't realize they were still the in it. I had to go in and change the file name. I had to do some other stuff to get files that I just yeah. recorded. And I'm like, yep, never using this card again. Yep. Yeah, I, I had still a transcend have... uh, locking thing break off on me one time. Yeah, because Todd likes buying crappy cards. <laughs> I still well, have I my 512 buying, gig. I stopped buying them then. I have my 512 gig, no, 512 megabyte uh, <laughs> transcend card that I, like my first card I ever bought. And that actually still works today. Remember when we did the, the Nikon D1X? You had the Lexar 1 gig? I had my Lexar 1 gig that I bought for 279 at Alan's camera when I bought my D2H. Mm. I, I thought it was really cool when Jeff Cable, who's the former director of marketing for Lexar, he posted a blog and saying like he remembers when that first one gig card came out. Then when there was a four gig card that came out and then now there's 128 and 512 and it's just insanity. Insane. So those are pretty much the news discussions that we had. Uh, hope you guys enjoy a little different take on it because we got the photo news fix where I go over the news. Uh, the reason that the photo news fix came about, it's a fun, informative way to do the news that's not waiting every two weeks to catch up on the past. Yep. It keeps you guys up to date maybe once Fresh. or twice a week, depending on what the news stories are. To be honest with you, photo news fix will come out when there's news stories that are worthy of doing and not just filler liquify tips you know how to do because there are on the news photo news websites i want to see liquify tips there there are <laughs> a lot put on your vr goggles there are a lot <laughs> i've got of the login filler stories that happen just filler stories because they need to keep rehashing things from like six years ago yeah, yeah. so yeah so that's that part now we're going to move into memes yeah then wheel of fro yeah i believe so we're cooking all right let's do memes then we're going to do Wheel of Fro. Let's do it. So here we are back with memes. Each week, Todd picks the memes that are sent in to sing Wheel of Fro. Greatest hey, email ever. Hey, did I ever. ever do an intro? I don't think you did. Shit. Dan, 
take this intro and then. <laughs> well, yes. no, we started off with the weird, like, where are we? Yeah, yeah but Dan, no, but Dan, there was no Jared Poland. You're going to take this intro and you're going to cut it in where it should go. And I'm just, and let me explain to people. <laughs> There's okay. going to be a laptop in front of you. <laughs> and now we're here back at the memes because Dan cut that in. Todd, tell us how you picked the memes. Well, you know, we're trying to streamline the show a little bit. So these are the best of the best. Uh, we get, uh, you know, we get a handful every week. And I've got the top three this week. And you can send your memes to the best email address ever. Sing Wheel of Fro at gmail.com. First one's from Craig Hadfield. It's Batfro. But JPEG is just as good as anything. Raw! It's not in focus. Steven! I found a spare road. I'm- no, Dan! Video guide money. It's not on. <laughs> not the lens, Todd. Apparently, that's me. I love the, to, uh, the money's everywhere, too. I like you're out of focus. Uh, so yeah, it's that's, great. That's Craig Hadfield's take on Batfro. Next great. one's from Mike Nice, and he uh, these are Android <laughs> users' feelings. <laughs> My gear vault is coming. He's got a black rapid strap he on. He does, yeah. Oh, he does. <laughs> That's awesome. Which I'm totally, completely out of stock on because Black Rapid is not oh, making no. anymore. Oh, um, And finally, our good friend Sanchez the hell? sent Foxy Wolf. And he gave a little explanation here. Todd is a given name. The name originates in Middle English where it means fox. Possibly referring to a fox. And then he does one hunter. <laughs> I'm like, hunting Foxy Wolf. I, I don't like know how why he, uh, you're in my ear. Well, you are always in my ear. He somehow. underlined possibly referring to a fox. <laughs> So that is from Sanchez, who, by the way, he, he did a little drawing for my wife as um, Wonder Woman for her birthday. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I asked him to do it, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know how that goes. Oh, I can't wait to see this. How, how muscular will it be? <laughs> it's fairly muscular. It's going to have yeah. a bedunk or yeah. what? I mean, I have it. In spandex pants? Do you want to see it? Show it, yeah. Can we show everybody? Don't show us now. You can just show everybody. And I mean, we'll I can show later. you and everybody now, because I'm giving it to her... This weekend. Well, you can just show everybody on the screen, and then oh, you physically. He oh, it's physically like a print. It. It's a print. Yes. Oh, oh we thought it was, we thought it was like a digital no, no, print. file. You didn't I, say that. Me I mean, second. who prints stuff these right, days? Seriously. No, it's not print. He drew it. He oh, drew it's a sketch. Yes, that's what like sketch of Sanchez is. Yeah. So. And yeah, if you're watching, if you're listening to the audio, you. So there it is. Oh, that's great. That's what he did. There's multiple options. Oh, who's the woman in the background? Well, I guess that's a close-up of her. I guess it's like the clo- it's like the close-up, but the shading's you know, off. Well, that's black and white in the back. <laughs> the Apparently, that's off. her. And there's a couple different options that he did as well. That's so great. We'll it see, looks awesome. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how she likes it. I was gonna try to put on a t-shirt for her so she could wear it since she thinks she's awesome. But she already but is. Thank awesome. you, Sanchez. <laughs> Best husband you ever. You should follow Sanchez. Put it. Put his um stuff up. Sketch. On art of sanchez i believe something like that put that up there dan so those are your those are your memes we'll probably pick around five of them each episode uh we had to delete one before the show because i don't get to see them before and so this one didn't make the cut because it's not worth having the issues i didn't realize like I, so, some of it i didn't know yeah todd was. doesn't know because todd I didn't know who was in the scotty doesn't know scotty doesn't know scotty doesn't know that's a good callback. Nope. Matt Damon. That's a good callback. <laughs> uh, so it's time for the Wheel of Fro, where if you've gotten to this point and you didn't hear the beginning where I said, we're going to pick the winner of the Wheel of Fro from the comment section on YouTube. If you listen to the audio, go to YouTube, leave a comment, a good comment, within the first 24 hours of the video being posted. We know that because we can track it, and so we will go and look and then randomly pick somebody. So I'm going to go around the wheel now. I'm going to spin it, and then you know who's going to win Something, what you're going to win. Something, yeah. Something. So I have to talk about a couple of things on the wheel. Uh, Rode Microphone. This show is brought to you by Rode Microphones. We use the Rode Broadcasters on each and every show. And if you listen to the Photo News Fix Extra, I use the Rode NT-USB, which is in a very... It's a very affordable USB microphone that very I plug right in the garbage mic. band, and it, record, it makes me sound good. It is. It's really it, good. It's kind of like using... So where this is like using RAW... I use the NT-USB because it's kind of like JPEG. JPEG. It does all the work for me, in essence. Interesting. That's what I have to say about that. Yep. My, fo- my phone is... T- I'm just making sure it's not somebody ringing the doorbell. Oh, I thought it was your dad. No, it's hoping. not my dad. Uh, so we've got Rode. We've got um, Lexar. They are currently a sponsor. 
And uh, we, I don't know. What do I say about Lexar? Go buy the cards before buy they run out. You can. Yeah. Maybe there will be a massive sale. Oh, that would be nice. They are reliable. The, the back, back that truck up. I honestly feel yeah. like I should buy some and back, just stock up. Back yeah. that truck up to us. Now, people are going to go. Are they going to still support it? They said they're still going to support cards. So that's something you need to take into consideration. If they're no longer in business, how are they going to support the cards and if that little, happens? Yeah, because aren't there... My homies. <laughs> Aren't there lifetime warranties on some of the higher end cards? Something like that. Yeah. Which we'll see what the government says. What else? Who else? We've got um, we've Ke- got uh, Kessler Crane. Kessler Crane. Go to kesslercranecom slash fro. Use the code fro10. Fro10 to get 10% off. We uh, still love our Kessler stuff. We've got the Pocket Jib Pro. We've got the plates, the quick release plate thing, yeah. which is yeah. awesome. Yep. We use that, and somebody won that last week. And I think that's the only sponsor uh, that has really given us sponsorship squarespace.com slash go i mean squarespace.com slash fro let's spin that wheel let's do it one day the wheel is going to spin off and go through the door i'm waiting for it around the the doors don't forget to leave your comments the door holy shit this is loud what what it's a loud wheel huh Oh, oh nice. bum, bum, bum. Congratulations goes to a randomly selected person from the comments below that left a comment within the first 24 hours on YouTube. Congratulations. You want something from Think Tank. Think Tank. Brought to you by Think Tank. Think Tank. We should make them put a hashtag in the comments, too. They made it this far. They have, like, an extra special edge if they have, like, hashtag... Yeah, then everybody's... Something. You know people are just like, oh, this person left... The- I'm going to leave the hashtag, hashtag too. <laughs> oh, hashtag. Yeah. Dan, do you have hashtags this week? No, because you suck. Way to go, Dan. Way to I be actually on top just of got it. that, speaking of Think Tank, that Streetwalker hard drive... What'd you do? Wheeling bag, whatever that one's called. Oh, yeah. But it's basically the backpack now with wheels. Nice. It's awesome. Yeah. You actually gave me that that I they did. sent you. It's brand new. And yeah, so Think Tank... Uh, I forget what it's called. Streetwalker Whore? It's, it's the Streetwalker something. I have that. It's, it's the Streetwalker Hard Drive something. Yeah, Hard Drive HD or something. Yeah. Uh, store.fronosphoto.com to pick up one of my custom Fronos Photo I Shoot Raw Retrospective 30 Ooh. Think Tank shoulder bags made of ballistic nylon. Ooh. Which is what they're going to get for what they just won on the wheel, right? They will not. And does not stop bullets. It doesn't stop bullets. But Todd's <laughs> cartoon wife does. <laughs> yes, she does. She started rowing, by the way, down the Skook Hill with the rowers. Oh, that's some when? serious muscle uh, power, so man. Sat- uh, t- yesterday they had their first like uh, meet. Well, I'd like to go. My cousins photos, are rowers. Fly a drone. Oh. Try not to crash it into the yeah. train tracks at the she zoo. She actually asked Good me luck. to come take <laughs> photos, and I was like, well... Do the first day. We didn't talk about that. I know. I meant to talk about that. (sighs) You want to talk about it real quick? Sure. Let's talk about it. Warning. We almost were on the news. (laughs) (laughs) It was bad. We Uh, were almost those assholes. uh, Sorry, me. I was almost that asshole who crashed a drone into SEPTA's train tracks. crashed a drone. uh, Amp, sorry, Amtrak's cutting the wire. Probably not cutting a wire, but hitting a wire. Then it... The drone flew away. So basically, it was the end of the shoot for that uh, Sigma 100-400 at the Philadelphia Zoo. We were on the parking garage roof, and we're like, all right, we just need one aerial shot, like an establishing shot for the intro. So this big, giant storm's rolling in, and it's right above us. It wasn't yeah. above us yet. Dude, it was like a minute away. Well, when I brought it so down, So I told it Jared, I'm like, we probably shouldn't fly it right now. The radar says it's pretty much over top of us. And you're like, oh, we'll just fly it real quick. So we put it up. And it just starts spinning and just going really? out of control. And we're well, like, not right away. What what happened is I'm, right I'm looking away. at the screen. We did all our calibrations like we normally do yep. with the Mavic all Pro. All the calibrations. And I'm looking at the screen and I get a yellow like issue with the... GPS, right? Or something? No, not the GPS. With the compass. The compass. Mm. Then it became a red issue with the compass. And I'm like, I'm bringing this thing down. As I start to bring it down, the thing just starts going Just drifting. Way. Say this is where the power lines are. It's like doing this, and we have wow. the video of what it's doing. Yeah, and then and then you'll see it spin because that's me trying to find my orientation to make sure I can go the right way oh, because I'm right. spinning it to try to find where we were versus where the the, the things were. So I didn't want to accidentally go to the right and right. end up in the in well, at first the tracks. It did go a little to the right, and then you got. Then I found it. Yeah. I brought it back, and it wasn't listening very well. And then I brought it down and let it land. And then when like. 
Never again. And then literally, what, a minute later, just, just started downpouring, crazy wind, all this stuff. Yeah, so that was a freak storm I saw on the news it that, they, that people didn't even see that coming yeah, like, until it, like, it was on top of them. We also would have been on the news with that storm that night. That would have been terrible. <laughs> it could have been very bad. Been so, the ultimate clickbait. Be very careful flying the damn drones near yeah, things. Yeah, very careful. I don't want to fly it near anything at all. That I know. could be risky. Yep. It's dangerous. That's it, people. So thank you guys very much for watching. This has been Raw Talk episode number 223. Jared Poland Fro knows photo.com. See ya.